The following is a short excerpt from a 60-minute DVD entitled Secrets to Successful Title Bass Fishing, available at DelawareValleyOutdoors.com. In this DVD, we'll be covering the upper tidal Delaware River from Trenton to Philadelphia. We're going to show you some of the most productive spots to save you time and put you on fish faster. We're also going to show you some of the ramps on both sides of the river to cut your running time down to the best spots. Putting in at Linden Avenue, we travel south two miles to what is known as the Paper Slip. One feature that is well known is a sunken barge in the back right corner of this boat slip. This is a premier spot that holds fish in both high and low tide. Bob, we just pulled into a spot here on the river. It's called the Paper Slip. We fish it all the time. It's a well known spot, it's not a secret or anything. Right. But the way we're going to present our lures to it could be different than what other people are going to do. We're both going to fish soft plastics. You know, we're going to try to get up into the shade. But you're going to fish, we're going to fish complementary techniques is what I would call it. You're going to fish a soft stick bait, which doesn't have a lot of action. And I'm going to fish a worm with a curly tail, which has more action. And that's one of the tips we can give to uh, people who maybe are trying to locate fish or something. If you're fishing a crankbait, your buddy can fish a spinner bait you know, until you locate fish. Have people fish two different types of soft plastics, and that can, you know, really reduce the amount of time it takes to figure out what the fish are doing. And color-wise, you can switch off colors. You get a watermelon, I have a, like a, a June bug color. Right, dark colors, light yeah. colors. Right. Yeah. Fish will pull off during low tide, but remain close to the structure, as long as some part of it remains in the water, even at low tide. When the tide comes back in, the fish will move back on and around the structure. Look for structure like this at low tide and check for water levels. Steve, this is a rather intimidating piece of structure uh, to come up upon. Uh, you got all kinds of things going on here. What's the, like, how would you attack it is basically, where is, where's the best odds to start fishing it? Well, with high water like this, Bob, or really any water, I would probably start on the outside edges, the big main support beams where you have the long areas of shade come down. And the fish are gonna be one of three places on here. They're going to be on the vertical beams where they go down to meet the old trestle. They're going to be on the flat deck of the boat, or they're going to be you know, somewhere on the outside suspended next to the edges. Uh, in order, I would probably say the vertical beams, the flat deck, and then the edges. But with your cast, you could pretty much cover all those places on one cast. And the important thing on it, and you know, we've said this lots of times, is you want to get your bait right up next to it, fall down next to it, and a vertical fall. My lure right now is falling on completely slack line. It's not being pulled out away from the boat. Yeah, it's not pendulum away from it. Exactly. And that is probably the biggest key. Now, if you were to come here on a cloudy day, fish would tend not to be as close to structure, and maybe you would start out by throwing a spinnerbait or a crankbait up there. You know, fish would have a bigger strike zone. But for most days, you really do need to get right up in there. And you can see that you have cross members that come down. And the areas where, where they come together. And you, you know, you really have to kind of visualize it, you know, because you can't see it all. And the other thing is, if, if you're gonna come and, and go scouting on, on tidal water, mm -hmm. you wanna do it at low tide. You wanna see what's exposed, what's not exposed, hazards for navigation. The other thing is, if you were to come in here, and as good as this looks, if it's a complete mud flat at low water, and it's mud all the way out past the barge, it probably wouldn't be nearly as good a spot as it is with the fact that it has the deeper water. That fish was exactly where it was supposed to be. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's a nice fish. Yep. Nice fish. Now that fish was up on top of this barge in, in the shade, but 
the sun beating down on the barge heats up the water. The tide is high, so the fish move up and down real easy with the vertical supports. Textbook spot. Textbook spot. Nice fish. Yep. Yep. Nice fish. Yeah, again. <clears throat> With this structure that we have here, it's <laughs> it's amazing how many nooks and crannies, but you got to fish each one of them you because have, they're laying each, each one of those spots could be in. You have to be very, very thorough. I mean, two or three casts of this thing does not do it. A hundred casts. Yeah. You know, you could fish this for a half hour. And the thing is, these fish can actually spawn up on top of this barge. It's another place of opportunity. You know, in, in tidal waters, there aren't a lot of completely ideal places for the fish to spawn. So if they can scratch out a spot on top of a, a lay down piling or one of these barges, they'll spawn on that. Yeah, and it gives them also a lot of protection too. Right, and the thing is, I mean, this is, this is what I would call like a dominant cover. I mean, if you look at the rest of this cove, there's some little lay down stuff, there's some gravel and stuff like that, but this is, this just screams, you know, <laughs> catch a fish and you definitely have to spend some time on it, you know? We're slowing down, we're fishing some, some small four inch baits, you know, we're, we got a cold front, wind, all that stuff we're dealing with. But uh, once these fish are up to where they're gonna spawn, they're, they're not gonna leave. No, they're gonna just stay. You know, they, they may come back a little bit, they may go a little bit deeper, they might be a little more lethargic, but in tidal water, you can make these fish bite. Where on a lake or a pond, it might be a little more difficult. Yep, there's another one off that barge. Yep. Uh, look at how fat one this one is. Now, was he up on top or was he off the side? He was laying right off the side, right basically where you were catching him. They're just laying right along that edge. Okay. Right along that edge. He's probably laying up there with his nose poking out of the shade. Yep. You know, the bait fish can't see him. Yeah, and the baits we're fishing are a slow falling bait, so it stays in that water column much longer. And right. We just picked it right up. Oh, yeah, yeah, that one is. And we're basically finesse fishing, Bob. We're we're using you know small four inch baits, light line, light weights, and we're we've slowed down. Yeah, you know, I think we don't have. Ticket. Yeah, we don't have a whole lot of cloud cover or anything like that. You know, it's it's a quite sunny day. And, uh, you know, the fish are going to be tighter to objects. I think I just had a little pickup there, maybe not. Nope, oh, I missed them. Definitely fish in here, though. Yeah, definitely fish. And I think what I'm gonna do is, you're using a, a little bit more subtle color. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm using black with a chartreuse tail, which under these high conditions may not be so good. I'm gonna switch over to something a little more natural like a watermelon with a chartreuse tail or a pumpkin or something. And uh, we'll see how we do. This is one small segment from a 60 minute DVD entitled Secrets to Successful Tidal Bass Fishing. For more information, go to DelawareValleyOutdoors.com.